Exactly 20 minutes after 7. Very detailed spot right there. The Australian Open very much open. Uh, we'll keep you updated uh, uh, on who wins, who loses, who goes into the, the second round of that competition. Remember, BBC says it has uncovered some corruption in tennis as well. We've got more on a lot of things happening. The Labour Front today, Tewu, on some sort of strike action. Has it been declared? Details of that also here on the AM show. But right now, uh, let's talk about She Leads Africa. I kind of like that. It's a woman's stuff. Uh, and I'll leave it to Mamie Jay, who's an actor and co-producer of An African City, and FRC co-founder, She Leads Africa, to tell us details of this. Uh, some sort of boot camp for women or girls in business. So good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, tell us a bit about She Leads. Okay. Oh, thank you for having us. Mm. So she Leads Africa is a community that helps young African women achieve professional success, mm. either in business or career. So via our website, sheleadsafrica.org, you can get advice, get inspirational profiles, or learn more skills to improve yourself. And we're here in Accra to host our She Hive, which is our professional boot camp starting from Thursday until Sunday to give people more one-on-one -on -one training and get access to more than 20 speakers and mentors mm. to their business. And we're very excited to be hosting the launch event for An African City, which is the very popular web series, which was also produced, directed, and created by young African women who are entrepreneurs and who are creative so we want to encourage and support them as well mm. so when I say you're here in Ghana does it mean this is not your base so we work across the continent so this year we'll actually be in seven countries hosting events so from Nigeria South Africa Kenya so we're excited to be hosting our first boot camp and first one of the year in Ghana mm. what, what motivates you I mean what's where, where did this whole idea come from mm -hmm. yeah I think my partner and I we we're very blessed to have um, educational experiences where we learn how to navigate, you know, write a proper CV or how to do interviews. Then we also went to work for corporate places that really invested in career development. But we realized that not a lot of young women work in those kind of environments. So they have a lot of questions on how do I get something started? I have an idea, but I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So they're looking for support or mentorship or guidance. So we said, how can we bring all of that together? How can we bring some of the resources out there? to connect them to these young women. So that's where the idea came from. Mm -hmm. And we're excited to be going strong after two years. OK. Uh, I'll come back with experiences with what happened last year, for instance. Uh, but let me talk to her for her, because she's on uh, African City. No, Mami. Mm -hmm. Mami mm -hmm. Jay is on uh, African City. Yeah. Uh, this is, is it real? Like, <laughs> is it real life experience? Because I don't know, like, I feel it. You feel that it is or you feel that it isn't? <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's real life experience of many women living in Ghana. Not every woman, you know. Mm. I think that's been the question for some people. Is this real life? Yeah, it's real life for some, some women. And I think the show's been a success because we've tapped into the lives of women, a certain group of women that wasn't really being explored. Mm. Um, so, you know, we're back with season two. The fans are really excited and we're about to launch it. And we were so excited when She Leads Africa reached out to us about partnering because they're a woman focused group and our show is, is really about women five mm. young women navigating this Accra life which is can be hectic. Um, so we're really excited about launching with She Leads Africa and really just pushing pushing the boundary and the stories about what it means to be an African woman in, in 2016. Mm. So just so you haven't been following uh, an African city these five young ladies came from Abruzzi <laughs> and then Accra and they're living their lives, yes. uh, going through relationships, yes. you know, everything that we experience here, mm -hmm. except that they take it a bit differently because of where they've come from. I, I want to say we take it a bit differently. <laughs> We're trying to figure it, it out. We're trying to figure it out a bit more than, you know, people who are already here. Yeah. 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 So this is a series that is online. Yes. Yeah. So actually for season two, we're also going to be on TV. Okay. So we'll be on DSTV from February 1st, but it's still going to be online because mm -hmm. our base fan fans are online. So okay. we want to make sure that we still touch base. With so that. the connection between you and FY is the women. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how is it going to work with the, with the two of you connected together on this platform? She leads. Go ahead. Yeah, we're excited to host 
the launch event on Thursday night, and so their new season starts on Sunday. And the boot camp will get a sneak peek Aww. of the new season, and they'll also get a chance to talk directly to Mame, Nicole, and Esther, the writers, creative directors, producers, to say, okay, how did you go from this idea mm -hmm. to get it started? What did you learn the first time? Mm -hmm. And how did you apply those lessons to season two? And kind of what advice and inspiration can they give to other young women who want to start something that they haven't seen before, who mm -hmm. want to do something new? Yeah. What advice can they share? So we're excited to bring uh, Mame and her team directly to our community. And then, of course, encourage and share the good works that they're doing with an African city. Mm. Do you always need money to start something? Don't say no. Money is important. <laughs> Please. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. You do. You do. But more than money, you need people who believe in you. You know, you need to find a team who believes in your idea, who believes in your in your dream. But uh, you, you need money. You need money. You need money. But I think the when you have the support, um, it just gives it an added push for you to find those lanes where you can find money to, mm -hmm. to make your idea a reality. So how did yours work? Because like uh, maybe 10 ideas yeah. in my head yeah. really uh, for like TV programs yeah. and I'm thinking I need to do a pilot and go and look for money but your program is not on traditional TV yours is online and that for us that's how we knew we could do it because we didn't have money to do a full season and take it to a TV station and say here's our show please buy it so we started off really Nicole put all her savings into season one. It was self-funded and we put it online because we're in 2016 now a lot of people are connecting online and we put it online and people just caught on to it. So by the time we were ready to do season two we had an audience so then we could go to a TV station and say we've already built this audience you just need to tap into it. You know, we, it wasn't too hard of a sell mm -hmm. after we had created our own base. So I think my advice, if you have an idea, is figure out how you're going to get your base money to, do, to just do a pilot. If it's a TV show, just do a pilot and put it out there in the world. And, see what mm -hmm. and use that to sort of build your next steps of how you can push the show further. Did you make money out of season one? Did you Absolutely break even? Absolutely not. We didn't even break even. So season two is where we're hoping that we can break even for season one and maybe even make some profit. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So how did you start? <laughs> and for how did you start? It's the same. My partner and I, we both had full-time jobs. So this was a evenings, early mornings, weekends type of thing. And so we used free resources. So we first started with a pitch competition for women entrepreneurs. And we said if you applied and you got through and you competed, we would offer you $10,000. But we didn't have the $10,000 when we said it. We just put it out into the universe and believed it would happen. Really? But first, we wanted to see, is there an interest? And we used a free Google form, put together the, own, the application, and within six weeks got more than 400 applications from 25 countries. So we knew there was an interest. And then we were able to take that data and information to a bank, and we were lucky to work with GT Bank as one of our founding partners to say, okay, here's this community of young women. Look at their profiles. They're your customers connect to them and support this initiative. So That's once we nice. had something, <laughs> once we had something, then we were able to take it to other partners and move mm. along, but piece by piece. And I think many people think you have to have a lot of money to start. It's like, as Mame said, what is your base amount? What is it that you need to do to create a minimum product that you can test and see? And it won't be as good as it could be. It won't be the best possible thing. Mm -hmm. But at least you start at some place, which is what a lot of people won't even try. So you've already taken that step. Uh, towards progress. I tell you what, somebody may be watching us right now and the person will say, yeah, you can say all you want to say after all, you have exposure, after all, you've traveled, you, you haven't lived here, you didn't school here. Uh, if you put your CV down, I'll put my CV down, they will definitely choose you because you sound differently from the way I sound. You need that European or American exposure, don't you? No. Absolutely yeah. not. No. Absolutely no. not. For me, what you need is motivation. You need to believe in your, in your goal. You need to believe in what you want to do. Because you can, we, we, the people who have the exposure and have the idea and can't do it because they don't have the belief in themselves. For me, it's motivation or anything. And season two, we went to a million sponsors and people turned us down. So it has nothing to do with where you're coming from, where you've, you, you went to school. It has to do with how much you believe in what you're working on. 
because it's going to be hard. You have to hustle. You have to push. You have to open doors. So if you don't have that strength within you to keep going, then it's never going to happen. It has nothing to do with where you went to school. Mm. You don't, I mean, there's people who didn't even go to college and have pushed through for their businesses and what they believe in. So absolutely not. I don't, I yeah. don't believe that at all. Yeah. I also think that everyone has things that they're very strong at. Other mm. people have things that they're not strong mm. at. So you have to look at what do you have that are your advantages. Yeah. If you schooled here and you have a local network here, that is your advantage and base because you have people you can talk to. Mm -hmm. If you have a product, you have friends and family who will test it out and who will talk to you and can spread it within their networks. Mm -hmm. If you're coming from outside, you have to work a lot harder to even know who you should be talking to, to even find people. So I think that everyone, if you're looking to start a business, you have to think about what are your personal advantages and how can you maximize on those. In the areas where you're weak, you then go find support team or other business partners but you can't start with a mindset that you're already not going to do well mm -hmm. or other people are doing better than you okay let's talk about the boots camp now how's it going to work out um, well we're excited to have five days within 20 speakers and it's really focused on tangible practical skills so um, it's open to anyone who's interested in learning and we have courses from um, we have the head of Airtel the CEO of Airtel who will come and talk about corporate and how do you rise up the corporate ladder we also have for entrepreneurs how do you understand your numbers and your finances we also have some fun events like in african city we're also working with jumia ghana for a style and beauty night so anyone who wants to attend they can purchase their ticket online at shelisafrica.org or they can meet us at one airport square which is where we'll be starting from friday at 1 p.m um, and we're really excited to just bring together a community of young women, allow them to network with each other, allow them to learn new skills, um, develop connections, and hopefully improve their businesses and careers for 2016. Mm -hmm. How much would it cost part of it? So a pass for the whole week is 200 Ghana. Uh, for one day is 80 Ghana. Are you housing the women who would come? No, we're not. But we will have refreshments and snacks and food stuff during the day. Okay. So it's 200 Ghana for the five days? Yes. Okay, and then if you're passing through for a day? 80 Ghana. Okay, and the venue is? One Airport Square near Holiday Inn and Marina Mall. Mm, okay, um, so Mami, what should we expect? You know, what, what do you think the experience will be like? Um, I mean, I'm, I, for an African city, I'm just excited for everyone to see one episode and, and see how they feel about the new episode. The episodes are longer, so there's more stories tucked into it. Um, and I just want to see a bunch of women getting together one evening and just networking um, with She Leads Africa. So I'm really excited about what Thursday night is, is going to bring. Mm. Yeah. Is your background, you know, like are you an actress? Is that what you're trained to so do? So my background's in finance. Yes, my background's in finance. My master's is in finance. I worked in finance for about seven years. And when I decided to move I decided that I was going to just pursue my passions, and that's how I got into acting and producing. So that's what you do now? That this, this is what I do. People, oh, God, my parents always ask, is that what you do? Is that, <laughs> is that what you really do? Yes, that's what I do. That's what I do, yeah. So your, you know, passion is what is, that's what you're doing now? Absolutely. So you don't feel like you're working? I do not feel like, I mean, 6.45 in another life would have been very early for me to wake up, but I was very happy to wake up and be yeah. here for 6.45. Is it fetching you a lot of money? I wouldn't say it's fetching me a lot of money, but it's making me very happy, okay. and that's crucial. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Please, what's your background? <laughs> I actually worked in politics. Yeah? In strategy. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, I originally moved to Nigeria to do West Africa work uh, for a consulting firm. I was working with a lot of big companies. Um, and of course, I think big companies have a lot of help. So my partner, who was also working at the consulting firm, we said, how can we take the skills that we've learned and provide them to young women who are interested in building their business? So we've gone from large scale budgets with all the trappings and the chopping with someone who says, I want to get five new customers this week, how can we develop that plan? And we're excited mm -hmm. to be able to, to work with them because you can see the real impact. You can see the change, how one week is five new customers, maybe the next month is 10, and that's mm -hmm. how you eventually grow and build strong businesses. How was last year's experience like? It was great. We had more than 150 young women came out, and the feedback was incredible. I think people really felt empowered and they felt positive about the experience, and mm -hmm. I think we want to encourage the confidence 
and the positive mindset in young women to, it will be hard, of course, it will not be easy, but you have the tools and the skills. And if there's anywhere where you need support, She Leads Africa is here to help you. Mm. Okay, so it's sheleadsafrica.org. Yes. And then you can get all the information and the tickets as yes. well to be part of this. And it's on Thursday. Thursday Starts night from is the launch party. Okay. Uh, it will be 8.30 p.m. You have to RSVP in advance at sheleadsafrica.org to be invited. Okay. All right, ladies. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you. I like it when young ladies are doing things for themselves. I mean, some men don't like it very much. <laughs> it empowers us. So, and that's, that's a good thing. We have to be independent. When we say independent, I mean, we're not saying we want to be independent from the, from the men. Right. But just so we can also get things going for ourselves. Yeah. Because you, you need to empower yourself. Uh, you need to be able to stand on your own feet because mm -hmm. you don't have to be relying on others all the time. Absolutely. So I like this. Thank you very much for sharing. Thank you. Very and much. we hope that a lot of you out there, particularly the women, uh, will be part of this. So just go to sheleads.org and get all the information that you need. Are men invited? Of course. Anyone can come. Okay. All right then. Uh, Ifwa Ose, co founder, She Leads Africa. And Mami J, actor, co producer of An African City. Thank you, ladies, for Thank being you. here. Thank you. Okay, so I got a few messages. Na Se Obo in Kwewu, I got your message. Thank you very much. I mean, you wanted to be like the first person to send me a message today. Uh, so thank you. Uh, and kindly include your name when you send a message. This is Tahidu in Bimbila. I got your message too. I'm grateful. And uh, this person says, that on the newspapers, job vacancies that are, uh, are there should also be read for us because a lot of us don't get access to them. From Yusuf at Bumprugo. All right, Yusuf, we'll see how we can we can work it out. We don't want the newspapers to say that we're not making them sell their newspapers, but we'll see what we can do. Hello, good morning to you, uh, Mama V and Roland, and welcome to a new working day of the week. And I pray that God gives every one of us what belongs to us uh, but I'm not happy uh, oh because ask, you asked to give a video of Peace Square with a title track bring it on but you refused hey was I in Tamale Charlie I don't see where you're going or I'm not sure I promised anything NPP will surely win this year's elections because we are suffering as uh, Ghanaians under this government led by John Mahama it's from Aziz in Bimbilla. Michael Aminin in the UK, thank you for cutting down on the messages. It's not a, uh, some kind of thesis anymore. The Interior Minister should give Ghanaians a break and his hypocritical and propaganda talks by suggesting that <laughs> should remain calm because our security is secured. Uh, okay, and then you go on and on and on and on, but I see where you're going with this one. Michael Amini in the UK, thank you for your message. Uh, you can also send me a message on 0560 that's the WhatsApp number. Hi, good morning, Mama Viganians, need Nanado, uh, and Alhaji Dr. Baumia now, okay. Uh, President Mohammed and his NDC has failed Ghanians. It's from Mohammed Sule in Sunyai. Interesting. We're not talking uh, party politics, but there you have it. Uh, a lot of messages in there. You can also send me a message when we come back. It's Tewu and back in on a strike action. And is the Labour Front also going on another demonstration on Wednesday and Thursday? What's happening really? Is it because of the elections? Details right here on our show. Stay with us.